Good morning, everybody. Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel and coming at you again today, um, today the 22nd of January, 2021. Hope everybody's uh, fine today, doing okay, and uh, staying away from the COVID virus. Um, so stay safe out there. Thought today what I'd do is take a look at a new uh, distribution of Linux for me. Um, I haven't seen this before. Uh, it's called Reborn OS. It's an Arch-based Linux distribution. Uh, and we'll run it with the XFCE desktop. And so let's do that uh, right after this. Okay, I'm back, and I'm up on the Reborn OS website, and it is at rebornos.org. You can see it right here. Um, you can click this download link here, and that will take you to the downloads. And then you'll need to... Uh, the, the Reborn OS 2020-12-28 x86-64 ISO is the latest one. Uh, you will have to come down here to this link. You can either do the uh, uh, this link here or you can come down and there is one for Torrent as well. But I, don't, I do not. Oh, here's SourceForge. You can see the SourceForge. And then there's a direct download link here um, for the Torrent as well. Uh, so you can get the ISO or the Torrent. Uh, I did the ISO version and put it in my ISO folder. And so I'm going to run, uh, set this up, show you how I did it uh, in VirtualBox 6, and then um, and, uh, go ahead and then review uh, the Reborn OS for you. So let's go ahead and go on over to uh, VirtualBox. Okay, I'm out on my VirtualBox 6.0, and let's go ahead and get this thing started. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Machine and New. And let's put in Reborn OS uh, 2020. I'm going to base this on uh, Linux. And it's in Arch Base Linux distribution. So let's go ahead and put in Arch Linux 64 bit. Let's click Next. I'm going to give this uh, 4 gigs of RAM. So let me put in 4096 here, megabytes, and click Next. Uh, I'm going to create the virtual hard disk now. VDI virtual disk image, dynamically allocate the space. I'm going to give this uh, 20 gigs of uh, space here initially. And let's click Create. All right, so now that we have that, let's uh, go ahead and select Settings. This is OK here on System. I'm going to untick the floppy, highlight the hard disk, and uh, move it up so that we boot up on the hard disk when we uh, boot this up again. For display, I'm going to select uh, 128 megs full mount of memory. I'm going to select the graphics controller VBox SVGA. For storage here, I'm going to select empty. Come in here and hit the uh, uh, CD-ROM. Choose uh, create. Go down and put uh, Reborn OS and choose that. And we're done. Done there. Click OK. Let's click settings one more time, get in and select audio. We're okay for audio settings as, as is. For network, let's change that from attached to NAT to bridged adapter, uh, ENP2 as zero. And then for USB, let's go ahead and check USB 3.0, click OK, and we're ready to go. So we're ready to fire this up. So let me go ahead and click the start button here. And uh, let me... Um, it's not selecting that. Let's see. There we go. Let's choose and start and then view full screen and switch. All right. So let me uh, select that and let's see here. Let's, see. let's do escape. All right. And enter. So it's probing the EDD, getting started here, and uh, it's booting up. Uh, and we'll get to the Reborn OS installer, which is, I think, a Chinchi installer. Since it is Arch-based.
If you haven't used VBox um, or VirtualBox 6, it's a great uh, little application. So you might want to give it a try. And if you haven't used VBox before, uh, this video should help you out in setting it up. Uh, installing it, that's something you're going to have to do on your own, but it's very easy to install applications anymore in Linux. All right, so it's coming up now. Here we are. This is Reborn OS. Um, and um, we're going to get to the uh, installer here momentarily when it loads. Here we go. All right, so it's this Reborn OS, uh, and this is the Chinchi Reborn OS uh, installer. Um, and it's uh, GNOME Base 2020 uh, 12.28. So this was released on December 28th of 2020, so it hasn't been around very long. Okay, so that's the upgrade anyway. So let's go ahead and click on the Install It. And we are selecting English here, not behind a proxy, so let me go ahead and click the right arrow. It says here that uh, it has the uh, at least 8 gigs of available storage space. It's plugged into power source. It's connected to the Internet, and uh, Chinchi is up to date, and there are no temporary packaging issues. Uh, this is connected to a wired connection. This is through my host machine, which is a Dell Inspiron 3668. Got 16 gigs of RAM here, so this should fly. But I'm only allocating 4 gigs to the um, the VM here. So let's go ahead and get the move forward here. English uh, Australian is not what I want. So let's go ahead and come down to English United States and select the right arrow. Uh, for the zone, I want America. And then for the region, I want New York. And so I'll select New York. So it's in my time zone here. This is good. And uh, right arrow, we have the English keyboard. So let's uh, we're good there. Let's right arrow over. And this is the base. The base we want here, I'm going to show you today, uh, is an XFCE base for this particular uh, distribution of Reborn OS. All right. And then let's uh, click right arrow. Um, for additional packages, I don't think I want to select any additional, perhaps, except other than maybe LibreOffice. And so let me go ahead and uh, turn that on, activate that. Everything else, uh, I just want to make this as small as possible. Um, I mean, even VLC can be installed later through the software packages. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at that. And let's go ahead and right arrow. And it says the Arch User Repository Disclaimer. Uh, it gives you this warning message that the Arch User Repository is uh, a collection of user-submitted packages. Uh, and it's supported uh, by the Arch uh, community. Um, okay, It's not supported by Arch or Reborn OS. AUR is not. So the Arch Repository is, but AUR is not. That's the user repository. So let's click close there. All right. Um, recommended to use an additional cache. Uh, I am going to go ahead and select the uh, VDI space for an additional cache because of the number of packages that are being downloaded. Let's go ahead and select the right arrow. And um, it says that the dev SDA will be fully erased. Yeah, I know that. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and sec select yes. And how would you like to proceed? Let's let Chinchi uh, find the recommended mirror list. Um, it's going to go through the mirror list and find the fastest mirrors. That's fine. I'll let that do that itself. Right arrow. Let's erase the disk and install Reborn. Uh, I don't want to do anything else here. So let's go ahead and right arrow there. And then we've selected the drive here. We're going to use the drive in its entirety. So let's go ahead. We're not going to encrypt anything. Right arrow. All right, let me put in my name. Uh, my computer's name, just going to call this Reborn uh, OS VM. And uh, username, I'm going to select Data Pioneer. And password, put that in. And repeat it. A match. Okay, we do not want to show the password. We want to not log in automatically and we do want to require the password to log in okay so a right arrow that so here we are this is a summary we've got the English uh, US location uh, United States uh, New York time zone 
Um, keyboard layout is US. The desktop environment we're installing is XFCE. And then we're installing these features so with the Firefox web browser. And, um, and then the device partitioning will be automatic. All right, so let's, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and get this started. And confirming everything looks good. Let's click yes. And off she goes. So, all right, so this is going to take a while. And uh, when Reborn OS uh, installer has completed its job, um, should take about 10 to 12 minutes. I'll be back and we'll pick up from there. Okay, so it's coming up and here we are. This is Reborn OS. This is the desktop. Uh, I need to go ahead and put in my password. So let me go ahead and do that now. Click in there, focus on that, and click login. And let's log in. So this is going to be the XFCE desktop, as I told you. First thing it uh, presents us with here is um, wants to know if we want to add the Flatpak repository. Flatpak is uh, a way that Linux installs a lot of packages now. I'm going to go ahead and say yes to this, and you can do whatever you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and add the Flatpak repository. So I'll click that, enter my password, and authenticate. And so this is going to come up and uh, load the uh, Welcome to Software. Let me bring that down. All right, and so this is your software repository for Flatpaks, and these are all Flatpaks. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close that for now, and then I'm going to remove it from startup so it doesn't come up anymore. And authenticate. And now it's gone. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is the X XFCE desktop. XFCE, if you've never used it before, it's a very uh, lean um, desktop environment. In fact, if we right-click and open the terminal here, and uh, run, uh, let's see if we can get HTOP to come up. Nope, HTOP is not installed. Let's install HTOP so we can look at the uh, memory resources being used here. So let's do a sudo uh, pacman dash capital S HTOP and put in the password. Pacman is the uh, package manager for Arch Linux, if you're not familiar with that. Say yes to that and let it install. It looks like it is completed. And so let's clear the screen. And uh, let me uh, bump this up if I can. There we go. And uh, let's run HTOP and see what we have. All right, here we are. So we have 2.7% uh, jumping up and down here for CPU. Memory is only 549 megs out of th 4 gigs. Not bad at all. So it's very lean, not using a lot of memory. We have no swap being used, uh, even though swap was created. Uh, looks like it used uh, half of the available RAM for swap, so that's 2 gigs, uh, which is normal. Um, we have 81 tasks running, 141 threads, one running, 81 tasks in the system, 141 threads, one running. Load average here for 5 minutes is 0.1, for 10 minutes is 0 0.08, and for 15 minutes, 0 0.03. It's only been up for 3 minutes and 21 seconds right now in uptime. But that's these are very good numbers because I've got a dual-core system. Anything under 2 is, is good. So we're good to go here. All right, so let's go ahead and click Q and get out of it. And I'm going to install Glances. If you've never used Glances, let me install that for you. sudo pacman dash capital S uh, Glances. It's another uh, way to look at your system. And say yes to that. There is a web based interface to this as well, so you can acquire it from any computer attached to your network. So let me go ahead and clear the screen and run Glances. All right, so this is Glances. Um, I like this a lot better than even HTOP. Memory shows percentage of utilization here. Um, and over here you've got your other things. You've got 1 minute, 5 minutes, 15 minutes for your load. Um, here you've got memory. 
uh, being used and um, and other things going on. So give glances a look as well. Let me go ahead and clear that out. And while we have this open, let me just do our uname. And so it says that we're running Linux Reborn OS VM. We we're using a 5.10.9-arch1-1 kernel, uh, x86-64 system. All right. And the last thing, let's do a um, well, let's do an LSPLK. You can take a look at the way it partitioned the the hard drive. It's an SDA disk. Uh, has a boot partition of 511 megs. Um, it has a root partition of 17.5 gigs, and then it has uh, other partitioning, SDA3, SDA5, which is the swap, et cetera, et cetera. So let me clear the screen again. And um, now let's run, um, what else do I want to run? DF-KH. Take a look at that. So we, we can take a look at what the system has set up, but we can look at a percentage of usage right here. All right, so out of the 18 gigs of uh, usable space, uh, we've used 53% of it. So 20 gigs of um, allocated uh, VDI was probably a very good choice here. All right, so let's go ahead and clear the screen or exit out and get back to the desktop. All right, so let's take a look at what we have. Um, we've got the trash icon. We've got uh, the file system. If we double-click here, it brings up the uh, the file manager. It looks like this is Thunar. If I do a help and about, yeah, Thunar 4.16.2. Very good. I like Thunar. It's okay. I like uh, Nemo. I like PCMN FM better. So if I were going to run this uh, as a daily driver, I would probably install PCMN FM here in Arch Linux. But you've got your usual host over here of uh, things, uh, Data Pioneer with the home directory, uh, desktop, trash, documents, music, pictures, videos, and downloads. Um, you've got the uh, CD-ROM here, and um, if I browse the network, if I click on Browse Network, I've, you can see I've got some uh, shares out there on my network, uh, Raspberry Pi running uh, SMB. So I've got a Samba share for Windows and uh, CIFS as well, uh, Common Internet File System. Um, so if I, you know, if I go ahead and if, I think if I double click here or right click and open, let's see if that uh, brings it up. It does not. So let me come up here to the screen, to the top, and let me run a Samba command. 192.168.1.125 is the IP address of my Samba share. And there we are. So file store vol1 is my... Uh, main storage. If I double click, it's anonymous, so I'm going to click connect. And there I am. I'm in my stuff uh, out on my uh, uh, out on my NAS, network attached storage, which is being uh, actually two spinning one terabyte hard drives. This is one of them called File Store Vault 1. And I set that up with uh, Open Media Vault. And uh, that's another video I have out there. If you want to check out my Open Media Vault video, uh, I believe I have showed you how to set this up as well. And so I can get into my documents. I can get into pictures, you know, and things like that. Um, and uh, so saved pictures, stocked images, that kind of thing. And I can bring them in here if I want to. All right, so let me go ahead and close this. Here's my home directory. If I double-click on that, here again, we're in Thunar. And here's my home directory stuff with my... Uh, places off here on the left hand side. So let's go ahead and close that out. Now on the desktop itself, if I right click here, I can create a launcher. I can create a URL link. I can create a folder. We'll call this a uh, new folder. And click create. Then a new folder comes out on the desktop. If I open that up in Thunar, then I believe I can right click and create a document, an empty file. I'll call this a uh, starter file. All right, click create. And there we go. So, all right, so your usual things that you can do here in your X XFCE uh, desktop of uh, Arch Linux working just fine. So let's right click again. Um, if I, I can open the terminal, which I did earlier, I can open a new window. I can arrange desktop icons over here. I can click on desktop settings. And if I do that, it gives me more uh, choices here for uh, backgrounds and so let's go ahead and see what we have. We've got a, quite a selection here of background images. 
Let's take pick one that we want to work with. I think I'll pick uh, this one right here. I like. Click that one, and um, it's on the XFCE folder. So let me click close. Now, uh, Reborn OS comes with several desktop environments that you can install. You know, we could have installed GNOME. I like GNOME as well. Could have installed LXDE. Could have installed others, but this is the XFCE. I like it because it's uh, lightweight and uh, and very responsive, very fast. All right, so we've done that. Let's uh, come up, look at the panel here, what we have. And um, and so here we have uh, your Ethernet connection. This is our uh, wired connection, so this is your adapter settings here. Uh, here is an updater. The system says it's up to date right now, so we don't need to run the update. However, if we wanted to do that, let's take a look at that just to make sure. So I'm going to right-click on the desktop, open terminal, and let me bump it up again. All right, and hopefully you can see that. And if I wanted to update the system, we can update the repositories here in, in Arch Linux. If you're familiar with it, you know that the command is sudo pacman dash capital S Y Y. Put in a password, and that's going to update the packages and the repositories. We have a core, extra community, and multi lib. Uh, multi-library uh, repository and now to update the system if it uh, requires it sudo pacman dash capital s y u and that's going to synchronize the databases and nothing to do here so we're good to go all right so that can be believed here that there was nothing to do all right so now we have our uh, uh, audio settings here we have the microphone audio mixer uh, here we have the computer itself the setting for notifications we've got a calendar it's the 22nd of January as I said we've got a time here 1110 and then we can shut down the system we can lock it switch user suspend shut down log out whatever we want to do here all right so let's take a look at the panel let's right click and select panel preferences and under panel preferences here we're on panel one I'm going to unlock the panel temporarily here you can take that panel and move it to you know a vertical position or desk bar I'm just going to leave it horizontal for now at the top um, the row size we can decrease the row size here so if we decrease it, it makes that smaller up here um, and let's come back up to what it was I think it was 26 that's good that's about right for me Number of rows, we can increase that as well. I'm going to leave that as one. Length is 100%, so it goes across the entire width of my uh, 1920 by 1080 screen. But if I wanted to make that smaller, I could just lower that down with the slide bar there. Uh, I'll leave it at automatically increase the length. So if I add things in here, it'll, it'll automatically increase. But actually, if I've got it 100%, it's not going to increase any more than that. Let's click on Appearance here, and it's in dark mode. If I uncheck that, it'll change that into light mode. I am a dark mode person so I'm going to leave it at dark mode. The style here is I'm going to use the system style but you can select a solid color or you can even choose a background image if you like. I'll leave it at system style. Um, for icons I'm going to adjust the size automatically. I could click it that way to do that but I'm going to, I'm going to leave that turned off. The icon size I'm going to leave that at 16. That's about right for me. I don't really like the icons out there at all, and you can turn that off if you want to, but I'll, I'll leave it up there for now. Opacity, I'm not going to mess with that. Um, I can change the enter and leave opacity. This is the leave is when you uh, enters when you hover over, and leave is when you're not hovering over uh, the panel. Um, I'm going to leave that at 100% so that we don't see through it. All right, and then items, uh, I'm going to add an item to this panel and the item I'm going to add is if I can find it here is uh, let me click add couldn't find it so I'm going to go ahead and check that add button and I want to do the uh, whisker menu all right I don't like the menu here that I'll show you in a moment let me go ahead and add that and so that added that up here in the corner all right so I'm going to go ahead and close this well actually let me get one more before I go um, weather updater I like that one too so let me go ahead and add that one and click close and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, display I'm going to lock the panel 
I'll leave it unlocked for now until I can move this. And so let me go up here to the applications and let me right click move and let me come up and grab it and let me move it all the way across um, to here. All right, so it's positioned right there. And the weather application, uh, let me right click and move that. And I'm going to bring that and put it right there. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and lock the panel and close it. Now, here's what I'm talking about. If I click on applications, this is the out of the box. I'm not too keen on this. I don't know what menu this is. This may be the XFCE menu, I'm not really sure, but I like this one better. This is the whisker menu. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the applications and actually remove that one. And so now that we have nothing but the whisker menu. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here uh, in the whisker menu. So for favorites, we've got web browser, mail reader, file manager, terminal emulator, uh, recently used, all applications. Let's look under accessories. We've got the application finder, archive manager, bulk rename, calculator, clipboard manager, catchfish, file search, disks, fonts, HP device manager. I've got an HP printer, so that would be good for that. It'll find it. Mouse pad, notes, onboard, onboard settings, uh, reborn OS fire. Not quite sure what that is. Uh, screenshot, sensor viewer, and task manager. Thunar File Manager and uh, TLPUI. Not sure what that is either. All right. For development, we've got CMake and Icon Browser. For education, we have LibreOffice Math. For graphics, we have LibreOffice Draw, a Rosetto uh, Image Viewer, and Document Viewer. For internet, we have uh, the Avahi VNC Server and Browser, and SSH Server Browser, and Firefox. Let's go ahead and fire up Firefox and bring it up and see what version we have. And I'm going to pull it down and slam it against the top there and bring it to full screen. And if we come up to uh, the pancake and help and about Firefox, you can see that we have version 84.0.2, 64-bit. Very good. This is the latest version, I believe, for Firefox. I do believe that's the latest version. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. Close Firefox and close the tabs. All right, so let's come back to where we were. We were on Internet and I believe we were at Firefox Multimedia. We have the Echo Mixer, the NV24 Control, HDA Jack, uh, Retask, HD SP Configure, uh, some other here. I'm not really familiar with those at all. Pulse Audio Volume Control, and then the Qt. Uh, V4 L2 test utility and video capture utility. Look like those could come in handy, uh, especially if you use the Qt uh, interface. For Office, we have the full Office uh, LibreOffice suite that I installed on install uh, of, uh, of this thing, uh, of Reborn OS. So let's click LibreOffice and see a uh, writer and see what we have for a version here. And we can go ahead and X this. And uh, let me just expand that, zoom in. Let's go up to help and about LibreOffice and you can see that we're running a uh, pretty late version here, 7.0.4.2. So that's a, a much later version than I'm running in other distros of Linux. So I'm running Cubes right now and I believe it's a version 6. So this is much later, 7.0.4.2. Very good. Let me close that. Um, close that out. All right, let's come back to Whisker menu. And for Office, for Other, we have the HP UI scan. Let's get into Settings. We have Accessibility, Add, Remove Software. Let me go ahead and fire that up. And um, I want to come back, actually come down to the GNU. That one's not installed, so I'm going to go ahead. The GNU Image Manipulation Program, or GIMP, I use all the time. Let's click the Install button, and let's apply it. And let's install that after I put in my password. It does require uh, super user privileges to install software. Oop, I put in the wrong password. 
and the right password might help. All right, and so it's installing the package now. You can see down at the bottom, and let's apply that. And it's installing the uh, GNU image manipulation program. Very good way to do installation of packages in Arch Linux, by the way. That way you don't have to compile source code and that kind of stuff. Um, much faster way of doing it here. It says it's completed. And so let's, uh, let's close this. Let's come back to the Whisker menu. Come down to Graphics, which is where it should be. And there it is. So if I select it, it's GIMP 2.1.0 latest version. Um, let me bring that up to the window as well. And uh, and so there it is. This is a full GIMP package. Um, I don't have any images to show you, but uh, you could just load them in there as well. Let's close that. Let's come back to Whisker menu now and come back to settings. And so we have the Arch Linux kernel manager. We have the advanced network configuration. We have the appearance. We have clipboard manager settings color profiles, default applications. We got the desktop itself, the display. Let's click on display. You can see I am running a 1920 by 1080 display, 60 hertz. Um, so that's good to go in this virtual box. Glad that this came up to full screen uh, so I didn't have to mess with it. All right, go back to settings here. Um, got default applications. And so if I click that here, uh, the internet default application is Mozilla Firefox. Mail reader, I don't use a mail reader. I use web-based uh, Proton Mail, so I don't need to put anything in there. For utilities, for file manager, we have Thunar, and uh, you can install your own. Uh, PC Man FM is the one I would install, and then I would switch it here. All right, and so for the terminal emulator, the XFCE terminal, you can choose X terminal if you like, but since we're in FXC, F XFCE, um, I'm going to leave it at the XFCE terminal. And then other things here for others. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. Let's come back to desktop settings again. And file manager, firewall. So we do have a firewall. And uh, mouse and trackpad, notifications, onboard settings, panel, power manager, print settings or printer settings, Qt5 settings. Uh, removable disks and media, screensaver, session and startup, uh, settings editor, settings manager, uh, and then window manager, window manager tweaks, workspaces, and X XFCE terminal. Let's look at window manager tweaks and see what we have. We have cycling, focus, uh, accessibility, workspaces, placement, and compositor. All right, so that's good. And... Um, Let's come down here to the uh, bottom panel, or actually before I do that, let me let me go ahead and configure this weather. Um, and so all I'm going to do is, um, let's see, I'm going to put a location in here. So if I do, come back and do a right click and select um, properties. Yeah, it takes me up here to weather update. So it's already got my preload uh, location preloaded here, Asheville, North Carolina. Got my latitude and longitude, got my altitude, 2,142 feet above sea level. That's about right. Time zone, at America, New York. Sounds good. For units of measurement, I've got Fahrenheit for temperature, barometric pressure. Um, I like to do that in inches of mercury. Uh, wind speed in miles per hour, precipitation in inches, altitude in feet. Windshield index uh, setup for appearance. Uh, it's got the liquid icon theme. I can change that to liquid dark. Let me change that to simplistic. Um, verbose here for forecast layout, days and rows, and then I can expand that to from five days to, let's say, 10-day forecast. All right, and let's close that. All right, and so now if I select that, here we go. I've got a 10-day forecast. I've got morning, afternoon, evening, and night. And i uh, got detail view here. Um, with all the data that I want to look at. Very nice little widget, weather reports. You might want to put that in yourself. And it uh, gives you some updates here as you're working in your system, uh, scrolling through those things. So very good. Let's come down here to the bottom to this panel. And so I'm going to go, this is panel two. And I'm going to right click on it and uh, select panel preferences. 
And I'm going to unlock the panel here for a moment. And here I have the mode, which is horizontal. If I wanted to put that off to the left, I could do vertical. And then since it's unlocked, I could grab this and bring it over and put it on the side panel like that if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that. I want to leave it at the bottom, though. I'm not a side panel person. Um, it's one of the things I don't like about Ubuntu is the Unity. It kind of has a Unity appearance, so I don't want to do that. But you can do it. And then you just lock the panel back, and uh, it stays where it is, okay? So let me unlock the panel again. Select vertical, so choose horizontal, bring it back, and then let me grab it and bring it back here to the bottom. Okay, so uh, I do not want to hide the panel intelligently. I just want to leave it at never, never hide it, okay? Uh, row size is a little bit big for me, so I'm going to bring this down to about... Oh, 35, I think, is about right. No, that's a little bit too small. 37, perhaps, is, is good. Number of rows, one is fine. It's got 10 here. It will expand automatically if I add things in here. Uh, and so, like, for instance, if I wanted to add the trash icon, I could add the trash, trash icon. I believe you could just right-click in the Applications. Um, I don't see where you can add that. Maybe you can just drag and drop it. That's okay. I'm not going to mess with it right now. For appearance, um, dark mode's fine. Uh, style is good. I'm going to adjust it automatically. Opacity, I'm going to leave the same. And then the items in here, there's where we, I would add the items. And so I would click Add. And I'm going to add, a, let's say, a... Um, oh, let's come down here and... Um, Let's add a mount devices. Okay, so I add a mount devices. That added that in there. You notice that expanded automatically for me. All right, so let's close that. And uh, let's come back to display and lock it. And let's close it and get out of it. And so uh, if I want to click on any of these, there we go with the mount devices. All right. And uh, let's say uh, if I want to get the file manager and bring that up, let's click on that down there. And it brings up my Thunar file manager. All right. Okay, so this is a Reborn OS, an Arch-based Linux distribution. Um, this is the December 28, 2020 build. I like it so far. Very responsive. Uh, it is in a virtual machine. If you installed it on bare metal, it probably would even run better than this. But I did not notice any sluggishness. sluggishness. It was very uh, robust, very responsive. Um, I like it. Um, and I think you'll like it too if you want to go ahead and, and uh, go back and, and watch my video again if you need to and put it in virtual machine, give it a try, and then once you like it, uh, if you want it to be your daily driver, go ahead and install it on bare metal. So let me go ahead and get out of it. So I'm going to click on here and uh, shut down and shut down and get out of it, get back to uh, my VirtualBox 6.0. All right, so this has been Reborn OS, Arch-based Linux distribution, December 28, 2020 build. If you like my video, go ahead and uh, click the uh, thumbs up on the video. That will help my channel grow. I'm approaching 1,000 subscribers right now, and I would like to get 1,000 subscribers before February. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, the Linux Unix tech channel, go ahead and do that, please. When my picture comes up, just click on that. And then when you do subscribe, click that bell off to the side, and uh, and that way you'll be notified every time I upload a video. And so this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a great day. Bye-bye.